Hi, uh, welcome to Everything Embedded. Uh, welcome to this exciting and interesting video. If you are interested in uh, Qt for Android or how to write simple games for Android, uh, especially using Qt, maybe this video will be useful uh, for you. Uh, well, the thing is, I am not going to cover how to write a tic-tac-toe game because that has already been covered in my previous videos. So make sure to watch my previous videos if you are interested to find out more about uh, the tic-tac-toe game as such. But in this video, what I am going to talk about is how to, you know, what are the technical steps uh, necessary which have to be performed on the phone as well as also on your uh, Qt side configuration so that uh, you are able to uh, uh, run a Qt based game or write a simple game, uh, the game of tic-tac-toe which we had previously written for the desktop but this time I have modified it so that it runs on the Android. So I have a Nokia 3.4 phone, uh, quite a decent uh, phone so which has a large screen display and is capable as well. So I thought, okay, can we, can I write, can I convert my existing project, which was a tic-tac-toe project, so that it uh, runs on Android and what are the technical problems which I will face and um, uh, what are the issues. So first let me show you the game. Let us see the game running and uh, then we should be able to uh, discuss more about it. So I have opened my project in Qt Creator all I'm going to do is, so I have connected my Android phone as well. It's a Nokia 3.4 as you see on your screen. So I will uh, just uh, press the uh, run button from here. And let's see what uh, launches up really. So let us do that first. Let us play with the game. And, and then we'll talk about what changes I had to do in the code and uh, what are the problems which I had to face and how I overcame those problems. So let us, okay. So without any more... Uh, Adieu, let's do that. Okay, so as you see, the tic-tac-toe game has launched. And let's play it here really. As, as you can see, I have modified the screen so that it is more touch friendly now because a phone is not a desktop computer. So you can't have, you're not having any mouse pointers or any mouse or anything. And the buttons and everything needs to be adjusted. The user interface needs to adapt to a touch based user interface. Let's first play the game and then we'll discuss the technicalities of it. So I also keep a score as well. And as you can see on your uh, the QT side, you get notifications as well, whatever you are doing. So I am currently running here as well. So let's play some more. So when the computer wins, it keeps the score. I have the score, I have the message, I have the two buttons as well. Let's play another game. Okay, so the computer is winning all the time. It's using the Minimax algorithm, by the way. So this version of the game has the Minimax algorithm. So this one was a draw. Again, a draw. So I think you are getting the gist of it now. So two buttons, new game and quit. Message is same, which is similar to what we were having in the previous uh, uh, versions. If you so I've just slightly modified it so that it is touch friendly now. The buttons are touch friendly uh, rather than being a uh, wait for desktop. So what I'm exactly using in this one? Well, if you have seen my previous embedded uh, uh, embedded Raspberry Pi projects in Qt, I use QML, which is a very fast uh, UI, which is almost like a JavaScript really. 
so it is in fact uh, javascript to be honest it, the name has been changed to qml so that is what it is and uh, what exactly did i have to do to my project so that uh, instead of running it on a desktop i modified it so that it runs on uh, android well i mean nothing much not much to be honest there is no, uh, not much changes except for the touch based past uh, so i have to use qml which i am going to show you now so let us look at the code here so i will uh, minimize this and uh, slightly zoom into this maybe as you can see the ui is quite simple just one qml file main.qml and it has two buttons here a new game quit and uh, our c++ class which we wrote in the previous version of the tutorials if you watch my previous videos there is a class called as painter board the c++ based class so that is exactly what we are using inside the qml as well so all our game code which you are seeing on the screen now is written in c++ it's everything is been drawn by q painter this may not be a very efficient method to write practical games but since this is a beginner video this is good enough for the beginners really to if you want to experiment and if you want to start experimenting so that is what we are using a c++ based class painter board and all we are doing is just creating an instance of that painter board here and the rest everything is handled by the painter board class so what did i have to do exactly in the painter board class so that it is it can be used inside a qml file because this is a this this is the trick here so the first thing if you notice is there is a statement which says import painter board so i had to create my own uh, own uh, qml plugin basically that's the right word for it a plugin uh, which is called as painter board and uh, well the name is very fancy but there is not much to it to be honest so i mean it's very simple all so i had this painter board class as you if you have been watching my previous videos you would already know that there was a painter board class so all i have to do was add a line with set qml element so as soon as you add this line qml element qt will mark this class that it can be used from within a qml file as well so which means all the functionality now is uh, available in qml and i have derived it from a q quick painted item this lets us draw our stuff so rather uh, so this is the way if you want to use your own drawing skills and if you want to use your own drawing methods using cube painter it has to be derived from q quick painted item and that's the main change here and the other change is in the project file so all i have to do was here i have to say qml import name equal to painter board that's that's the thing so it will automatically use that class now and it will be available from within the qml files and the other change was i had to register that qml type here it is this is how you do it so you register the type as well register your c++ class which is painter board in my name in my case so that's what i did and voila so basically now inside the qml you have your own c++ class which we have written previously whatever you are doing whether you are drawing the rectangles and other things so let's go to the c++ class now so this is what this class is now so which you have already seen previously so there is nothing has changed here so all the resource files and everything is the same all everything is c++ code drawing the grid lines all i have added was draw the score as well now so i keep track of the score which is a very simple thing just drawing a text here draw the status messages so everything is drawn now we draw everything now whether it's a rectangle or it's a text everything gets drawn and the logic is same so this one uses the minimax logic which means that uh, the computer will always either will win or it will draw the game the user will never be able to win this game so if you um, download this app i'll try to publish it on the google play store as well so you can download it for free from there and play it see if you can win against uh, this algorithm because i am not been able to win it the computer always wins uh, or the game is a draw so the player has never won even a single time 
so i'll upload it to the google play store as well and i'll put a link in the youtube video so hopefully you should be able to download it from there if you don't have access to the source code for some reason then you can just play the game on your android phone should be not be a problem and yeah exactly the code is exactly the same that's what i am using the c++ class from the previous tutorials from the previous youtube video that's what this is not nothing much has changed in here except that i have made the rectangle size to be smaller now it is 80 pixels so each uh, each of these red rectangles is 80 pixels uh, in a uh, size length and breadth and yeah that was it to be honest and uh, what is there anything else interesting well not uh, much really the sound and everything just uh, just works so, i mean all those things just work there is nothing to be changed so as you can see all your c++ skills are not going to waste you have you can use them on writing applications for the phone as well so this is just a simple application by the way i mean it is not a that big complicated application but you can we are not using the phone capabilities like we are not using the gps locations or we are not using the accelerometer or the or the other uh, sensors which a phone has so maybe in a future video i'll show you how you can use uh, what what orientation the phone is in uh, what speed you are uh, turning around and those kind of things some fancy stuff which is those sensors are only available in the phone so we can utilize the phone based uh, data and uh, use it for in our application maybe write a game which uses all those things so that will be something interesting i think i mean uh, what else is there to this video so this video was more about how to uh, what exactly i had to do to uh, get this application running on uh, android phone and the other thing was of course you have to install qt for android i mean uh, when you download the qt wizard from the qt website make sure you tick the option i want android support as well so it will by default i think that is always on anyway but just in case uh, you can check uh, double check on it so you should have support for android and the rest is simple really i mean uh, there is nothing much uh, much i have to do now okay now before i forget the other aspect is what do you have to do on the phone so that your phone becomes a developer phone because by default your phone is not a developer phone which what it means in simple words is even if you connect your phone via usb to your computer you will not be able to run your own qt applications you will not be able to do that so uh, what do you have to do on the phone okay so let's look at the phone now i'll quit this application so what i had to do was or there are steps to on it uh, let me let me go to settings first let us go to settings settings uh settings go to settings and scroll down to about uh, phone and uh, there is a uh, at the very end you will see an entry called as build number this so i have already done this process what you have to do is you have to tap on this build number seven times so tap on it seven times so if i tap on it seven times then your phone will become a developer phone what it means is now when you connect it to the usb uh, uh, options through the computer you can run your own application so once you have tapped on this seven times then you can basically go to uh, uh say just type here debug so then there will be a setting called as debug which will be available to you so sorry about the typo here i am uh, okay so debugging so you will have this debugging and which you can turn on the usb debugging there are various other options here as well which will automatically become uh, become available to you once you tap on the build number seven times there are a lot of options here go through these options but by default you can just leave them on as they are just turn on the usb debugging that's all you want 
at least to start with so and uh, yeah so now when you connect your phone now when you connect your phone to the computer it will become a uh, it will become a developer's phone and you can enjoy writing all the apps and uh, fantastic stuff uh, which whatever you want to experiment with you can just uh, make in qt and uh, run it on uh, on your android phone so everything whatever you have done will be available there okay so what i'll going to do is what about the qml file i mean uh, is there anything special in the qml file nothing but is there any easy way to design this qml file because we don't have to type in all this of course not in case you are not aware qt offers a design mode as well so you can just uh, switch to the design mode so i may have to do some changes or whatever is still going on i'm in the process of that so you can design your own stuff here you can do the buttons and all just uh, pull the components from the left hand side place them on here you have check boxes buttons round buttons a dial a slider a progress bar a spin bar a spin box everything can be put in here and that's how you design your screen visually so that way you don't have to uh, write any code for that so i was just showing you the code but you can just do it in the design mode as well so you don't have to type in any of this thing everything can be done from the design mode so hopefully uh, you have uh, you will like this video and uh, i'll try to make some interesting stuff for the android next time so hopefully i mean uh, that will uh, we can take it on from there uh, thank you very much for watching my video i will see you shortly in the next one cheers bye bye